Hi, I'm Devin Jones with Homes Fire. So in conjunction with a, a number of constituents and, and groups, um, private and uh, through funding for the softwood lumber industry, we also um, were involved in an initiative developing the uh, Now Laminate Timber Guide, uh, which is recently published for the US and there's also an initiative for the Canadian version of this code to be, uh, will be published soon as well. Um, so I'm going to give a brief overview of uh, the guideline that's been developed um, for now Lambert Timmer. So look at the prescriptive provisions of where it can be implied uh, under the current and forthcoming IBC 2018. Then we'll look at sort of how we go about developing uh, fire ratings for NLT, where we're looking to go beyond sort of your prescriptive type four construction. Uh, looking at some gaps in the current knowledge and, and research of um, NLT and, and where maybe there's some gaps that need to be filled in. Uh, from a research perspective and testing to be able to be employed in, in sort of the mass timber proposed construction types that Carl just outlined. Um, and then sort of looking at some potential engineering judgment or engineering approaches to help bridge that cap under the current framework and knowledge. Uh, just noting that the, the now Lamo timber guide is available for download as well from uh, AWC and, and uh, Woodworks as well. I'll have a link to that. So generally the application has been historically uh, recognized uh, for NLT. It, you know, it hasn't been called now laminate timber, but essentially it's been uh, a laminate uh, system for floor decking, um, quite often utilized in, in warehouses as sturdy system for impact resistance and, and high loads. Um, so there's been a resurgence of, of using NLT, and this is you know, whether it's on on-site or a uh, manufactured um, process for utilizing dimensional lumber to uh, structure walls and floor assemblies in a, in a fairly simplistic format to, to make achieve NAS timber that's codified under the Type 4 construction. Generally, it's a, it's a unidirectional system, so it really only spans one way, unlike CLT, which can span bidirectionally. So you're generally going to uh, use an LT system when it's in a flooring assembly, when it's supported on a typical column beam assembly, or you know, sometimes a, a general column assembly if you can um, pick it up with uh, depressed beams. So while it's more simplistic than CLT, it does have its advantages in relation to that uh, it can allow on-site or off-site fabrication. So you can set up a, a simple jig system on-site to manufacture your own uh, NLT product. Uh, it is a simple production uh, process, uh, and it generally has been the most efficient means of, of developing a mass timber system. It doesn't rely on any glues that are shipped, so uh, unlike sort of the changes that have um, come about with CLT manufacturing and TRG320, NLT hasn't suffered from uh, for those issues yet, but there also hasn't been a lot of fire testing uh, done to date for NLT systems. And you also, because it doesn't have adhesives or uh, any specific requirements for uh, manufacturing or pressing, uh, you can manufacture from uh, fire retardant treated wood, so it allows you then to implement NLT into some other requirements of the code, which I'll go through now. So under the current IBC, the 2018 uh, version is, is what I'm referencing most at the moment, has been the, the forthcoming code. Um, most typical applications of NLT is in type four, heavy timber construction. Uh, which is codified in 602.4. Generally, under the new code, this sends you to a new section which essentially outlines um, when in, oh, the requirements of NLT or mass timber or heavy timber construction, um, and that's within 2304.11 in the IBC now. And it's quite uh, consistently uh, designated throughout the code and that generally mass or heavy timber construction should be without concealed spaces. Um, and that becomes a very contentious issue when you're working with authorities in terms of what is a concealed space and what isn't. So it's important that when you are working with mass timber designs and you do have this concealed space provisions is to, uh, under, under type four construction, is to sit down early with your building authorities and work through these, these issues. Uh, it can be also be permitted uh, as a combustible construction of type 3 and type uh, 5 construction. Uh, so those are sometimes a more simplistic approach. You don't run into the concealed space provisions because it's, it's sort of analogous to, to light frame construction. You can also do, uh, utilize it in some circumstances in type 1 and type 2 construction, which would generally be limited to non-combustible construction. 
so the instances where you can use it in one and two are where you're allowed to provide not, uh, combustible materials in 603, and then utilizing uh, heavy timber for roof construction um, and some other instances where you have uh, provisions under note C in uh, table 601. I'll go into those in a little more detail now. So focusing on sort of where we can apply it in a more simplistic approach in type 4 construction, which essentially is heavy timber, uh, just note there that generally there's no rating that you required it, it, as long as it complies with heavy timber provisions, which are specified in 230411.2, uh, then you're fine. There's no, no rating required, apart from when you start to look at this with regards to exterior bearing walls. So, you know, specifically for type 4, it notes that you've got to have a two-hour rated assembly. So you can potentially use uh, NLT as your wall assembly utilizing fire retardant treated wood. Again, it's uh, recommended if you're going down that route to utilize um, NLT in that framework with fire retardant treated um, dimensional lumber as the basis for NLT. Have that discussion with your building authority at uh, the onset. Uh, so then you can now apply it in a more simplistic sort of looking at uh, comparison to light frame construction and you can apply it into type 3 and type 5 construction types. Uh, so generally it requires zero hour rating for uh, the uh, 3B or 5B. Um, then you're looking at uh, going higher or larger floor plate buildings, you can uh, apply it as a one hour rating. So this is when you start to get into requiring a one hour rating for your heavy timber construction. And if you're using NLT, there's not a lot of resources available at the moment that, uh, or even testing that's been done to designate or demonstrate that you can get achieve a one hour rating. But I'll go through that in a sec. And again, noting that you still have the two hour exterior wall provisions for uh, bearing walls for uh, the type 3A construction. So, when looking at applying uh, heavy timber or, or more specifically NLT and where we can use it in, in uh, non-combustible buildings such as type 1 and type 2 construction, um, there's a couple exceptions in the table 601 code that allow you to look at a uh, heavy timber uh, construction type and essentially if you're looking at note B um, under the primary structural frame or your roof construction, you can actually utilize uh, heavy timber as an alternate where a one hour rating is required. So it's a note that when you have a, a roof structure that maybe is 20 feet above the floor below, uh, it, you can actually uh, not require that roof structure to be rated. And there's an alternate to allow you to use fire retardant and treated wood where there's no rating required for that. So that's an opportunity to utilize uh, NLT in that roof assembly as in a fire retardant and treated wood format or in um, other occupancies where you have um, a requirement for a one hour rated roof to your non-combustible building assembly, you can actually, and it's only one hour rating required, you can use mass timber instead, uh, sorry, heavy timber in, in lieu of that. So going a little more into the application of type one and type two, again, summary of that, uh, 603 permits combustible construction um, in some applications, uh, during use sort of non-bearing walls or partitions with a fire resistance rating of two hours or less. So again, you know, you're calling out ratings that are required for these, these heavy timber elements. You can use it in non-bearing walls uh, where you require a zero hour rating. Um, roof construction, which I've been through as well, and then you can also use it as, as balconies, decks, and for exterior stairways that are non-exit stairways um, on buildings of three stories or less. Um, again, it's important to note that generally the requirements for uh, exterior uh, projections and balconies is that they achieve the same rating as the floor in which they are uh, located adjacent to. So again, you start getting into requirements for ratings for those uh, NLT elements or timber decking that may be used for those instances. Uh, important to note there is again the ones that I reiterate is good applications where you can use NLT uh, in you know, buildings that are uh, type 1, type 2 construction is uh, in your roof application. Again, going back to the bottom bullet point of 705 was in relevance to uh, Balkan's exterior position, uh, exterior projections. Again, you can use uh, combustible construction or fire retardant treated applications, um, provided that you get the same readiness as well. So, 
going into what exactly is uh, the new code provisions of 2018 in, in terms of 2304 designating heavy timber and how that um, relates to NLT construction. Uh, this section essentially nominates, and I'm not going to put a table up of that, anyone sort of can refer to that, but it, it basically designates the minimum dimensions for heavy timber. NLT has traditionally fallen within that uh, and will continue to do so for uh, new building products going forward. It basically limits that, or requires that for walls you have construction of four inch thick uh, laminate panels um, and, and the same thing for, for floor construction as well. Uh, it notes that you know, this is sort of a historical designation of essentially planks not less than four inch nominal in width set on edge close together, well spiked and covered with one inch wood structural panel or half inch particle board. So it's fairly simplistic in terms of being able to manufacture these panels. So fairly simplistic way of getting mass timber into your buildings. Um, in terms of actually what well spiked is, uh, you can then refer to uh, the sort of lumber decking and connections and fastening sections of 2304 part 10 and 9 to get more information on, on how to actually uh, spike or construct NLT systems when you're looking at it from either uh, on-site or off-site uh, manufacturing process. There is provision recognizing that roof decks, um, given that there's less exposure to those stroke systems uh, and there's less loading, you can actually utilize uh, three inch nominal width um, decking to, a, to achieve an NLT or heavy timber assembly. So going back into understanding where uh, heavy timber or specific NLT may be required to achieve a rating, there's uh, generally no requirement for, for type four 3B and 5B construction, except when you're looking at an exterior wall condition. Uh, generally, you're going to need a one hour rating for that mass to, or that heavy timber element when you're looking at uh, utilizing type 3A or 5A construction, or when you're looking at uh, potentially uh, supporting fire barrier construction within your building. So it's important when you're doing um, you know, a type 3B, 5B, or even a type 4 building it doesn't require rating to your structure, but you can build up to six stories for a commercial building. And so you then have uh, shafts or stairways or potentially passageways that serve assembly occupancies within the space that are required to have a one hour or two hour rating. So it's important to note that any construction supporting those uh, stairways, shaftways, passageways would need to be rated as well. Uh, there is definition within and commentary in the IBC that allows determining that, but again, that's an item that needs to be reviewed through with your building official to, to fully understand um, what aspects of your heavy timber construction need to be rated as supporting construction to those rated enclosures. So it's important that when you're looking at detailing your buildings and uh, it may be an open floor space office, but then a new tenant comes in and wants to put a cafe or a meeting room that exceeds your allowances for assembly use and you've got to put in corridors, you start to get in some issues of when you need to actually create a rating to your supporting construction. So building that up front into your design to allow for future flexibility, uh, say uh, detailing the connections so that they're uh, protected, uh, as well as um, the sizing of your elements to achieve you know, maybe one or two hour ratings uh, through calculation, is sort of some preparation that can be done to increase the uh, future use of your building. Two hour ratings, again, we're looking at, again, as I mentioned, potential support of fire barriers, um, and then you're looking at using uh, fire retardant tree to wood in a two hour exterior assembly. There are a number of other instances that exist in the code, but these kind of the sort of main ones that really provide a path for allowing mass timber, or sorry, heavy timber and an NLT for, uh, format to be uh, employed in these buildings. So basically what is a rating? This is probably something that Dave's gonna have in his presentation as well, um, but I'll cover it briefly. It's made up of three parts, essentially um, three parts for, for an assembly. Specifically, a uh, load-bearing assembly really has three parts to it. It has to have structural stability. Basically, it has to be able to sustain its load carrying cap capability uh, for the duration of fire exposure. Uh, integrity, it basically has to be able to prevent the passage of flame and hot gases from going through the assembly for the duration of fire exposure. And then insulation basically has to resist the temperature rise, so essentially heat that's conducted through the assembly. You have to make sure that, that uh, temperatures on the unexposed space don't get excessive. So there's three components to it from a, 
uh, structural um, or load bearing assembly and then essentially two components for non-load bearing assembly essentially is the integrity insulation. So it's important to note these uh, because when we get into sort of uh, prescriptive approach to determining fire rating for uh, NLT, you tend to miss out on a couple of these important components. So how to determine a fire resistance rating for um, any assembly really, but more focusing on NLT. Section 703 in the IBC basically stipulates that it's assembly that's going to be tested to um, the ASTM 119 furnace curve. And essentially that's either a load bearing or load bearing test done at an assembly such as SWRI or down in Texas. Uh, and then you've got some alternate methods that you can utilize to determine fire resistance ratings, which are codified in 703.3. Um, with regards to NLT, there, there are little or limited designs, documented and approved sources, essentially none yet. Uh, there's no prescriptive designs per section 72, 721. There are calculations that are referenced in uh, section 722. All the other approaches, you can go comparative engineering analysis based upon testing or um, uh, research that's been undertaken. Or you can develop an alternate means of methods in coordination and, and uh, review that with your building authority for approval. I'm going to go into a couple of those a little more detail in terms of those approaches, the prescriptive and then uh, some of the engineering analysis approach. So when looking at calculating the fire resistance rating uh, from IBC 722, um, generally requires that you can either achieve your ratings for NLT by um, protecting it with non-combustible layers, which essentially is now being codified within um, or being in the proposed code changes. Uh, so essentially it's as sim simple of having your NLT as your structural assembly and then providing non-combustible layers on the outside to achieve the rating of that assembly. The other method is that uh, section 722.1 provides a um, framework for developing fire ratings for exposed wood structures and wood decking. Basically sends you to chapter 16 of the uh, national design specification. Um, that then, uh, but noting that when you go to that section, it basically only addresses the structural stability criteria. Essentially, it goes through a calculation of determining your char, uh, and you've got different rates of char for one hour versus two hour exposure. And basically, it allows you to calculate how long your assembly can support the load for um, based upon one or two hour exposure. But it doesn't address the ability of your assembly, your NLT assembly, to um, prevent passage of hot gases through the assembly or conduction. So you're really only meeting the stability criteria of your uh, fire rate and you're not meeting the other two. So there's no guidance within those documentations how to achieve that. Um, another design standard that's references the technical report or AWC's technical report 10, again, that provides um, uh, some other strategies or uh, ways to calculate charring, uh, but again, none address the issue of how to uh, deal with your insulation criteria and your um, integrity in, uh, criteria. So this is kind of where we get into, there's been some research that's been done. Um, Lindsay Osborne up at FBI has uh, done some initial full scale tests. Uh, NLT assembly put on a furnace for three hours, it performed well. But there's some um, observations that came from that uh, and it wasn't a, a full scale <laughs> test that's suitable for um, determining fire resistance ratings from that test. Um, but there were some observations that were shown from that, as if your laminates aren't tightly um, joined together um, and allow the passage of hot gases to get between the laminates, you can actually get bidirectional charring. So you'll actually have the laminates performing separately as opposed to as a single element. So there's some criteria that sort of come from uh, recent testing um, that kind of stipulate that basically in order to allow for your assembly to uh, act as a, a single membrane of an NLT assembly, provide a monolithic topping such as concrete or gypsum or plywood or OSB to prevent uh, gases from being able to uh, extend up through the assembly and to keep the assembly tight. Um, manufacture the uh, laminates using dry lumber to achieve tight construction. Uh, research sort of indicates that when you get gaps of four millimeters or more, that will start to allow bidirectional charring and you'll get accelerated, um, uh, accelerated charring of your assembly and a reduced performance. There's been further testing that's been proposed um, by FBI, which is looking to happen in April 2018, which will be some full-scale testing of NLT assemblies, looking at the 
criteria, structural stability, as well as looking at the insulation and integrity uh, performance, utilizing composite assemblies, um, be either concrete decking or an OSB or plywood uh, sheathing on top. Uh, I also heard that there's also going to be some uh, testing as proposed at uh, Oregon State uh, that will be looking at, again, uh, performance and comparative performance of CLT and um, NLT in floor assemblies. So currently, with the lack of information in terms of testing uh, that we can rely on and um, the research, et cetera, that we can uh, utilize, we can undertake an engineering analysis approach to address the, the missing components of that structural um, rating. And that can be undertaken through an engineering analysis. It could be a, a simple process of going through small scale testing. So mm -hmm. you can take a, a proposed assembly, do some small scale bench testing to understand its integrity and installation ratings, coupled with a, a char and calc done through the NDS to, to achieve your rating. And that can be done up to sort of one or two hour ratings. Again, that's uh, engineering analysis. It's going to have to be uh, discussed and agreed upon with your building official. You can do a simplified thermal analysis, which may be a, a computer model to, um, to essentially demonstrate that you get your insulation criteria. Uh, and again, you may need to rely on some bench scale testing to demonstrate integrity testing. Or you can do the whole whiz bang and you look at a, a 3D structural thermal analysis. So you basically, the, in the, you build up the middle assembly that I've got shown there, put it into a structural element, that uh, finite element process, which does 3D uh, loading and your fire exposure. And you can look at uh, standardized curve testing. You can look at real fires as well. And to understand how the whole assembly works as a system as opposed to uh, element component testing. Uh, so basically, in summary, um, yeah, under the 2015 and now the 2018 permits NLT and, and Type 4, obviously, and Type 3 and four con 5 construction. Uh, you can utilize heavy timber or NLT in Type 1 and 2 construction uh, in place of one hour roof assembly. Uh, for future flexibility of when using sort of mass timber or heavy timber components in, um, in buildings of Type 4, 3 or 5 construction, it's important that you Maybe look at detailing and future flexibility building where you may have uh, tenant improvements that will drive uh, the need for uh, shaft construction, uh, stairways, et cetera, or, or corridors that will need to be uh, supported by rated construction. There is limited full-scale testing at the moment, but there is uh, slated to be uh, more full-scale testing and alternate radiant panel testing being done in the near future to help inform uh, further testing and performance of the NLT to be able to be considered in the proposed changes that will hopefully be implemented in, in April. Um, and again, when undertaking any heavy timber building, mass timber project, early coordination with your building authority of your, uh, your design team and, and sort of vet those um, projects. So even if you believe it's a prescriptively compliant project, it's important really to have those early conversations, just make sure they're on board and we're sort of deviating from the, the light frame construction and, and, and what we're really working with here is these mass timber elements. Thank you.